This is an NV4500 5-speed transmission from a Dodge Ram. In this video I'd like to remove the 5th gear assembly from the end of the transmission. So far all I've done is remove the aluminum adapter housing and uh, I've also loosened off this retaining nut here and uh, these can be quite tight sometimes but in this case it's a split design and uh, so I was able to loosen it here so the transfer case is finished and I have some parts on the workbench I'm going to show you guys what I found and uh, so this is the NP241 DHD and it goes together with that 5 speed transmission this is the drive flange it turns the front drive shaft it has quite a bit of seal damage on the uh, seal surface there this sliding collar has a fair amount of wear on uh, the edge of these teeth and they engage with this top sprocket here on these uh, little teeth here and uh, these actually they don't even look too bad yet there's a little bit of wear I think this top sprocket would still pass as a good used part the synchro was replaced as well as somewhere so here's how that collar engages sort of like that this main shaft had damage as well and it looks like needle bearing damage and it's it's odd with this shaft it only has that damage approximately on half of the shaft see this side looks pretty good and as I turn it it's on this side so now this this uh, this shaft here it actually only turns in the bearing when uh, the transfer case is in low range so in high range it will be sitting in the same spot on the bearings you know until it uh, goes back to low range so interesting how that uh, happened like that's a kind of unique damage why it would only be on one side I suspect that it may be because of the uh, hanger bearing the drive shaft slides on this end and then the uh, but it, it came out of a truck that had a, a bad hanger bearing there wasn't much left of that uh, of the, the I think the balls for that uh, bearing were gone and then the uh, the drive shaft it uh, could uh, wobble around inside uh, what was left of that hanger bearing and I think possibly you know that uh, wobbling effect and the shaft not uh, turning in this bearing and it may have uh, somehow put uh, that stress on one part of the bearing haven't quite figured that one out yet that's just a theory so okay so I removed a snap ring right here and uh, there was also two roll pins they're pushed in from the top so I drove those out from the bottom and so Let's see how much of this is ready to come off. Feels like it's the shift fork a little tight on that shaft. So what I actually could have done here maybe instead is leave the synchro assembly in place and lift up on the gear instead and 
the shift fork as well at the same time and leave it all as one assembly and lift it up. But this gives me actually an initial inspection a little bit here. And, uh, but what happened is when that uh, synchro lifted up, it uh, must have pulled on these struts and then it popped these springs out. And uh, this one was popped out as well and I've already put that one back. So I'll uh, put the springs back in and get this gear out of here and then put the uh, synchro assembly back in place and then uh, I can store it on the, on the workbench like that. So I was having a look at the synchro and it actually appears to be in fairly nice shape. Those teeth they still have little points and also there's a, a friction surface on the inside it, that doesn't appear to be worn. See that synchro is actually tapered to match this and uh, when they fit together it still leaves a nice little gap there between the two and when that synchro wears then that uh, that opening for the taper on the synchro gets bigger and bigger and then that gap decreases and uh, eventually then the synchro can't uh, do its job properly Okay, so looks like before I can get this gear off, I'll have to take the fifth gear retaining nut off. And uh, this is already loose. So this, this uh, lock nut is likely not going to be very tight on here. And once that's off, then I can take this thrust washer off, which is right here. And that's actually the one that's interfering with the gear as, as I try and lift it. I tested this thing before. It's a little tough to get on there. And I think that's because this lock nut is split, so it's got maybe kind of an ir irregular shape. That's better. And uh, this is a splined uh, shaft holder. Okay, now this thing should come off. That's better. This shaft seems like it has a fair amount of end play. It's got some slop in the bearings. And also if I look here, I can see that the gear has been just lightly starting to rub on this uh, plate here also a little aligning pin right there. I have to watch that I don't lose stuff like that. On the back side here there's a little bit of wear 
starting here and I can feel a little burr in the surface doesn't look too bad I could sand that burr out of there but I, I think that's because of that shaft running loose in the bearings it kinda wants to tilt the assembly over a little and here's where that aligning pin goes that uh, is in that shaft so needle bearing in here and so some of these parts well actually a lot of these parts they have an up and a down so you know like like this is there's a difference here is flat here it's more round here so I, I have to just uh, keep things organized in such a way that I don't start mixing things up like this and in this case I want to uh, keep this together as an assembly so uh, I'll just uh, get these components back in place and then set it aside on the workbench as uh, one unit until I want to work with it later so there's two flat spots here and they have to line up with the shift fork slider So I was looking in the shop manual and it says that this shaft should have two to six thou end play. And I'll lift on it a little bit and it's, uh, it seems apparent that it's considerably more than that. I would say that's probably more than a sixteenth of an inch. So I think under this plate is uh, the area where uh, the, the shims go to set that end play. But uh, I would like to actually uh, disassemble this transmission and see what else is uh, potentially wrong. So it turns out I didn't need a puller. This gear was already loose. But if it had been tight, then uh, here's some of what I would have used to uh, pull that off. So this is, this is Miller Tool 6449. And I'll do a bit of assembly here. So when I'm referring to the Miller tool, I'm just talking about the two black jaws. So this inner part here, that's uh, with the threaded holes, and also the outer ring here, that's actually my own doing. And it would work together with this puller here. So, and then this would line up with the holes. And then I would be able to attach them together. I have the bearing plates off, and so here are the shims that are under the bearing plates so this is the shaft that had the had the excessive end play and so I'm not sure so either the transmission was assembled with not enough shim to take up the slack or possibly something has happened on the inside of the transmission that has caused the end play to increase 